Communication comes in many forms. It's safe to say it's a part of everyday life. There are different ways that we communicate. There isn't a day that goes by where I don't message someone on social media. And I'm pretty sure 95% of the people watching this, if not everybody, doesn't let a day go by without going on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Discord, Reddit, whatever you use. But what would happen if suddenly the person that you've talked to for a very long period of time, sometimes in a span of years, just doesn't respond? This OVA explores the story of a boy and a girl slowly distancing away from each other, and the only way they can communicate is through emailing each other on their phones. While behind the scenes of this OVA, it tells the story of a man who made a name for himself as the creator of this anime short, as he was the director, writer, executive producer, the head animator, and character designer. He did it all on the latest edition of The Makoto Shinkai Project, Episode 2, Voices of a Distant Star. Set in the year 2046, the story follows a girl named Makako and a boy named Nobudu after Makako was recruited into the UN Space Army to fight in a war against a group of aliens called the Tharsians, named after the Tharsis region of Mars, the place where they were first seen. And the only way they can communicate with each other while she's out in space is by emailing each other through their phones. But as she strays further away from Earth, she realizes the text that she's been sending Noboru doesn't get to him until many years later. The farther away she gets from Earth, the longer it is for her email to get to him. After winning the grand prize at the 12th Dojie CGI Animation Contest in 2000, Shinkai had ideas for a follow-up while still working for the video game company Nihon Falcom making clips for their games. In June of that year, he was inspired to write voices after he drew a picture of a girl inside a cockpit grasping a cell phone. Not too long after that, Shinkai was contacted by an anime distribution company known as Mangazu, now known today as Comics Wave Films, giving him the opportunity to profit off of his hobby of making anime and making short films. After some time, he quit Falcom in May of 2001 and set off for the next seven months to work on his next project, Voices of a Distant Star, using only a Power Mac G4 computer with Lightwave 3D, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe After Effects, and Commotion 3.1 DV, a visual effects app. The OVA was released for advanced screening in February of 2002, and on DVD was distributed by Magazoo in both April and October of that year in two separate occasions. On June 12, 2003, it was released in North America by ADB Films, what was quickly recalled on June 30th, after it was revealed the DVD didn't have the original Japanese dub where Shinkai and his then fiance Mika Shinohara played Noboru and Mikako respectively. Around the time the short film was being aired to the public, a manga was released on February 23rd, which was written by Shinkai that tells more to the overall story of Voices of a Distant Star. And in the same year on July 25th, a light novel was released that Shinkai co-illustrated that also tells a story. There was also another light novel called Voices of a Distant Star, Words of Love Across the Stars that was published in Japan in 2006, but it wasn't released in North America until around three months ago on July 30th, 2019. This is also an interesting case because I happened to get my hands on that copy from a nearby bookstore. The book tells the same story as a short film, but is told in two parts, part one being from Mikako's perspective when she goes up to space, and part two is nobody's perspective as he grows older as he's getting the text from Makako. Apart from the fact that some of the chapters are only one sentence or one line long, that's not a joke, it's a pretty decent read, but let's get back to the short film. One thing I gotta keep in perspective while critiquing this is, again, this was made for the most part by one guy, Makoto Shinkai, uh, with the exception of the music. So there are going to be some things that I'm going to take a little bit of a pass on. For example, the animation. While the backdrops and setting are amazing, the character designs come off as a little, like, rough and odd and, you could argue, uninspired. And to that, I mentioned two things. First off, it was made by one guy. And second, this has the ability to consume the designs into the breathtaking world that he created, and his use of lighting, which does a great job of conveying the character's mood and emotions with each scene. It's one of the ways Shinkai is able to draw you into what their relationship is like, and how it's adapting with the current situation both of them are in. Another way that he is able to draw you in is the story, the execution. The plot 
it sounds dime a dozen, but the execution is amazing. It's really well done, as he was able to use the full 25 minutes in the short as development for both Nobudu and Mikako. Due to Shinkai's attention to detail, the shift in development comes in phases, as every new scenario comes a new perspective for both characters as time goes by. The music was once again done by Shinkai's former Falcom colleague Tenmon, who enthroned this short with some great piano pieces, and the ending piece through the years and far away, though I recently just looked up a few things about it, it's actually pretty popular. Uh, there's, a, there's a fair amount of people who know about this, and it is a very catchy piece of music that reels you in at the end of this emotional roller coaster. I'm going to link that song down below for anyone who wants to listen to it. That is actually a pretty good piece of work right there. When I watched this short in order to make this video, I watched the subtitled version, but after snooping around to find more information about this short, I've heard the dub wasn't that great, so I took a quick listen to the dub because it was 25 minutes really quickly, and oh my god. Stephen Foster, you've done some great dubs during your time, but Jesus Christ, you screwed this one up big time. You took the soul out of this. This dub in no way captured what the sub did. So before I go into a little tirade, I'm just going to give all of you who's, who are listening to this a little piece of advice. If you've never seen this show before, watch the sub. Don't watch the dub. The dub is trash. Watch the sub. Looking at the big picture during this time, this was the first big indicator for most people that this guy has talent. It was the first time he created something with a narrative to it, and he did an amazing job for someone who's doing it in their first try. It takes a lot to make a 25 minute tearjerker with nothing but a computer and a passion, and my god he did it. Little did people know at the time, but this will be the first time Shinkai will show his ability to relate to the viewer, something that he will put into most of, if not all, this film after this point. While the story features space battles and flip phones in the future, it's his raw depiction of loneliness and suffering from a long distance relationship that stays with the audience the most. During its time, there was nothing like it. And with that, I'm giving Voices of a Distant Star a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this latest edition of the Makoto Shinkai Project. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any videos like this in the near future, hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below. Any videos that I've made on the past, on the past, in the past, they're on the screen and also down on the channel. And with that, my name is Payne. See you guys in the next video.